Well, hello there. I was using a Drake TR4C today and enjoying listening to the amateur radio bands, but I didn't enjoy how this PTO was functioning. So when I was using this PTO, I would get like a stiff spot in the tuning or a bind and then it would tune fine and then a bind and then fine and a bind. So I gave it some study and what I found on this one, of course, I had to take this out of the radio again, which I didn't want to do. But what I found was there's this little tiny, looks like mylar washer that was on the bottom. And I broke the washer. It was bent. I was trying to straighten it. They have two of these stacked on top of each other. And those are, those are right here. So they, they go on this pin. Let me find it. Okay, so, and I need more light. Trying for more light. There we go. So there's this little pin in here that this goes under and I still can't get the light to work. Anyway, you'll see a pin here barely because the, well, the lighting is so bad, but there's a pin right here. And that washer rides on top of the pin. There's one in there now. And what I found was that was wobbling a little bit and that was causing this whole assembly to bounce up and down. So because of that washer, this whole thing, when it rotated, this whole bunch of gears would, would bounce up and down a tiny bit and cause the dial to bind. So that was getting real tiring and I should have noticed that when I put this together a week or two ago when I, when I worked on this first C-Series PTO. Anyway, these are extremely irritating to debug. So on this one, I again attempted the second try, so I pulled this out of the radio today. I tried to get these shafts straight again and I tried to have these gears not have any, any meshing, so I don't want any gear hitting any gear with the surface or the faces of the gears. I just want the teeth to mesh without the faces going. And they have like this tiny little flimsy washer in there. And I put it somewhere here. Okay, here it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the other, the other PTO from the, uh, the T4XB had this one in here and I pulled this one out and it seems like it works better. This kind of made the gears not mesh. This is a thick washer. There's also a very thin one in here and this one causes chatter and it causes the gears to be a little nonlinear. It's not very thick. And that washer was right about here. So yeah, I don't know if you can tell, but when you pull this back dial off, it basically was between the back dial and this gearing here. Whoa, just dropped in the rug. So that seemed like it would curl a bit and then get caught in the gear. It wouldn't get caught, but it, it would just make a funny thrashing noise. So anyway, long story short was I removed one of these Mylar washers here. This one I broke trying to straighten it. I, I left one in there. I would almost like to get a metal washer if I could find one that would fit exactly, put a metal washer in here, but you, you need something that's exactly the size and thickness of the Mylar washer. And that's about it. So I try to straighten these gear shafts out. I did tighten, I did tighten this arm by taking this gear off and then putting needle nose on here and pressing this little pin down this little keeper pin down a little more. This one I tried to tighten, but I don't want to take that gear off. Anyway, long story short is I think this thing works better now. I still have to put the, what they call the furrows onto this front disc. I just stuck the disc on here and got it going for completeness. But I think now I'm out of the woods. It's pleasant to turn this thing now. It doesn't 
how many grinding sounds. It doesn't bind yet. <laughs> All right, so let me really thrash it here and show you how it sounds. When I say thrash it, I mean I'm going to put my thumb in here, finger, and really swirl this thing around a bit and try not to break it. Okay, so let's get it toward the very end. And I will shut up so you can listen. So that's the quietest one I've had yet. You can hear the disc is loose because I don't have it fastened, but I think I think now I'm going to put this back together the way it is. And see how it goes. It's pretty nice to use it now. It's nice and smooth. So, you know, when you're just goofing around the radio, trying to hear someone to talk to, or just scanning the band. You don't want this thing binding and making weird noises, so. I mean, come on, it's a 50-year-old radio. You expect this thing to work perfectly, right? Oh, well, I do anyway. All right, so. That's about it from the PTO. Let's uh, pull it apart, I suppose, without me dropping stuff on the rug. Take that off. Ta-da. Take this off. Whoa. Ta-da. Now I can pull this whole assembly off. And it seems like when this thing's on right, this little gear will move. This one will stay in and move. When the shafts are all lined up correctly, it seems like you can do that with it, so pretty happy. That's how the other one worked when it worked right, so I'm thinking, so so what else did I do with this thing today? I, uh, I removed some more oil inside here. There's some more oil kind of in here. Got rid of that. And tried to make those a little easier to turn. Got to try to get some burrs off and some, just make it a little, little try to clean it up in there a little bit. So anyway, yeah, I didn't lash in this, I didn't lash in this, this KC dial because I just wanted to test it, so. And it seems, it seems like this will go in here. It seems like that should go in here, this thick one. It seems like this should go in here just because there's a, there's a big lip right here. And that doesn't benefit the KC dial at all, or does it? There's no, no, there's no indention on this dial, so. So that seems like it's made for that washer, so that's where that goes. I mean, people, you know, you buy these radios at a ham fest or on eBay or somewhere, and you don't know what people did to these things. So it's good to have a, at least some knowledge when you're assaulting these radios, trying to fix them. So anyway, yeah, so that little other flimsy washer went there. And let me show you the super flimsy washer. Where, where did it go here? So that was stuck onto there, and I'm not going to put that back on. Okay, the flimsy washer hit the floor. As you recall, in this video, it hit the floor. And I don't see it. That's the main problem with these radios is the floor. And me dropping things. Well, it definitely rolled away somewhere. Either the dogs will eat it, the vacuum will eat it. That's how it goes. It don't seem to need it. So anyway, that's that. Um, Here's the PTO again itself. 
this this has to be smooth. I tried to get this smoothed up again today. And you don't want to put oil in that bushing or inside here. And this knob, when people tighten it, it puts gashes into this shaft. And then I can't get this off, so I tried to get the gashes off it. You don't want to yank this too hard. Anyway, the, the little washer in question was was right here. And so when you see this washer, come on, light work. There it is. So when you see that washer, when I turn this, I can note it was going up and down a bit. And I also tried to get this pin to come out a bit. Maybe I succeeded, but this pin, I guess they call this a drift in England, but this little drift didn't need to be out as far as it was. So I wanted a little more on this side to balance the washer and maybe I moved it a millimeter I don't know I tried bashing this thing with a few different instruments to make it move and it didn't really move but how do you uh well people just put punches on these things and they punch them through so I, I'm not too keen on punching the VFO all together like this but I wanted to make that, th that drift move a little bit maybe I moved it but you want to make sure the drift can contact the pin on this wheel and where did the wheel go? You want to make sure the drift will contact that pin, and you want to make sure that it pretty much extends to the extent of this washer. And so finally mine's doing that, and I think that solved my sticking problem. It was going stick, stick, not stick, stick, not stick, stick. So I'd tune it and it goes, ouch, ouch, ouch. I could feel resistance there, so that wasn't too fun. Anyway... It's now time to put this thing back together. Uh, Drake says, I guess, to solder on some lead to this center pin on these uh, C-type PTOs, VFOs. I'm not sure why they call it a VFO now instead of a PTO, but that's that. Uh, it's very unpleasant to unsolder these wires, but I did it again. And I guess I'm gonna put it back in and see how it goes. See if it'll retain its uh, ease of motion. So, yeah, you want to keep this thing not oiled, unoiled, non lubricated. Put your oil can away, as they say. So, I still keep getting a little bit of crud on here from somewhere, but. And maybe this little washer keeps some of the crud out from the uh, bearings. That's probably what it does, really. Okay, well, that's about it for the uh, PTO VFO again. I don't want to have to take this thing out a third time. I just want to have it work. I really get tired of taking this thing in and out. Yeah, this pin, I was able to mash it down with some needle nose, just, just kind of going like this and pushing it down hard. That seated that one. So you want to make sure these things are... You see how it's not really wiggling a whole lot now and make sure that these are all in line as far as trueness they should be like zero degrees difference so you want to do that and that gear looks kind of whacked over there doesn't it but looks true I guess anyway make sure it's all true it sure looks like it's a little whacked but because it's working reason reasonably I'm not going to touch it it's going to put it back together and use it. All right, another exciting Drake video. I, I bet you couldn't wait for this one, right? Well, thanks for watching again. Have a great day. Enjoy the winter.